Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner is now fighting to stay in office. Next week, he faces a challenge in the Democratic primary by Carlos Vega, a former homicide prosecutor who was one of the three dozen veteran prosecutors fired by Krasner when he took office in 2018. During a debate last week, Vega criticized Krasner's record and blamed him for a spike in murders and shootings in Philadelphia. We don't need to make a choice between reform or safety. We need both. We deserve both. Mr. Krasner, you have blood on your hands. Milan Longcar, a young man walking his dog. Trevon Register, six-year-old boy beaten to death. Samar Jones, seven-year-old boy killed on his porch. Corporal O'Connor, killed in the line of duty. Gladys Coriano, a domestic violence victim, shot in front of her house. Dominic Bila, young man shot in the Franklin Mills Mall. These are just a few of the victims that we can directly put on the incompetence of Larry Krasner. In response to Carlos Vega, incumbent DA Larry Krasner defended his first term, saying he's followed through on his promise to reform Philadelphia's criminal justice system. First of all, we have a crisis with shootings. It is with fatal and non-fatal shootings. And the truth is that we have a nearly 85 percent conviction rate with those cases. That is among the very highest in five years. It is comparable to other cities in a very favorable way. It's a very high rate compared to other cities. And we did it without cheating. Part of the reason we've had 20 exonerations is we were dealing with an office when my opponent was there where the truth didn't matter. And so if you could convict someone, you convicted them. It might be the wrong person. They might sit in jail for 20 years or 25 years. That didn't get us anywhere. What we have to do is we have to bring things that work, and we've done that. For more, we're joined in Philadelphia by investigative journalist Lynn Washington, who's covered the city's criminal justice system for decades, recently wrote a column for WHYY headlined, Krasner's stance on Mumia won't cost him re-election, but it will stain his reputation as a reformer. Still with us, Ted Passan, co-creator and director of the PBS series Philly DA. Uh, we welcome you both to Democracy Now! Um, it, Lynn, if you can talk about the scope of this race, uh, what it looks like. Of course, his opponent in the Democratic primary um, is supported by the FOP, the Fraternal Order of Police. And I think that uh, endorsement by the FOP for the challenger of Larry Krasner, uh, Mr. Vega, is very telling. The FOP represents the very worst of regressive approach to the criminal justice system, the very elements that uh, Mr. Krasner is trying to reform. And here is Mr. Vega, who's claiming that he's different, aligning himself with the very ideology as well as individuals who have created the problems that we now have in the city of Philadelphia, where we have a justice system that is not operating in a just manner. The prime ethical mandate for prosecutors is to seek justice, not convictions. And this has been a part of Pennsylvania case law since 1889, when the Pennsylvania Supreme Court decision came down that enunciated the role for prosecutors is justice. Uh, and Lynn, uh, first of all, greetings. We haven't spoken in quite a while. We were former colleagues at the Philadelphia Daily News many years ago. Uh, I wanted to ask you this whole uh, approach that some people are saying, well, uh, Krasner, crime has, ridden and, uh, has risen and violence has risen during Krasner's time in office, when the reality is all across the nation, there has been there have been spikes in crime in many cities, and uh, some people, myself included, believe that we're we're actually witnessing a police national police slowdown uh, that is occurring across the country as police are chafing at the uh, the uh, attempts to control the way that uh, they meet out uh, abuse of citizens. I'm wondering your sense of. Uh, will this stick uh, on Krasner that he's responsible for the rise in crime and shootings in Philadelphia? Well, the reality is, yes, he's been um, assigned that label and assigned that label falsely. From the day he stepped into office, the Fraternal Order of Police and persons like his challenger, Mr. Vega, have said that uh, Larry Krasner, crime is going to be off the charts. You have to watch out for him. This reform is going to make people unsafe. Not true. As you've indicated, their crime has gone up across the country. And as crime has gone up, there's been an appreciable decrease 
in policing. In Philadelphia, a vast majority of the crimes, and particularly homicides, are unsolved. And if the police are not making any arrests, then prosecutors can't prosecute the cases. So it is um, intellectually un improper to say you're not prosecuting homicide cases when, in fact, the police are not bringing the cases to them. And according to Mr. Krasner, the cases that are brought to him are fraught with um, lack of evidence. And if Krasner is trying to do something different from what was the policy and practice of that office for decades, where they would just go in, irrespective of incongruities, incongruities in evidence, they would just put people in prison, put people in prison. That's their job. That's wrong, and that's what Larry Krasner has been, been uh, fighting against. Yet he has been, quite frankly, he's been tarred by not only the FOP, but conservative politicians, and even um, during the, his, his time in office, the then U.S. attorney in, in Philadelphia was very critical of the reforms. And this is a person who is the chief enforcement officer for the federal government, should not have been taking that kind of a posture, yet you have to understand the context. He was with the Trump administration, where a president openly endorsed brutality uh, in the name of law and order. And, and Lynn, I did want to ask you about a criticism that you've had of Krasner, his handling of the Mamiya Abu-Jamal case, arguably the most famous prisoner uh, worldwide, uh, the U.S. prisoner worldwide. Uh, and uh, th you conducted more than 10 years ago a, a ballistics test, and I think uh, Ted uh, Ted Passett actually filmed that, uh, in yes. terms of raising real questions about what happened, uh, again, the, with the evidence in the Mamiya Abu-Jamal case. Can you talk about your criticism of Krasner uh, and his failure to act on this case? Well, uh, the, the column laid out that Mr. Krasner has done what his predecessors have not done, and that's seek justice. Thus, he has reversed the convictions of about 20 people so far. There's a vast number more that, that should be, but you have to give him credit for what he did. In each of those instances, there have been uh, very clear and compelling evidence of misconduct, not only by police in the initial investigation, but prosecutors and in how, in many instances, they persecuted the cases. Now, how does that apply to the Abu Jamal case? The evidence that led Krasner's office to seek reversal of convictions for 20 people so far, commendably, is far less than the evidence of misconduct by police, prosecutors, and judges in the Abu Jamal case. So if you are a reformer, as Krasner is, then it's easy to take on certain cases, but the real defining line is when you take on the hard case. Reality, there is an institutional bias against Abu Jamal that goes from the police officers on the beat in Philadelphia all the way up through the justices on the Supreme Court of the United States. So that was the essence of the column, that when you look at the evidence that is supposedly underlying Abu Jamal's conviction, you see gross gross errors in there, and you don't need a law degree or a PhD to see those, one of which is what you just mentioned, the uh, bullet test that we did. According to the prosecution, Abu Jamal straddled the officer that he was convicted of killing, shooting downward four times, only hitting the officer once. If, in fact, it happened that way, then you would see bullet marks in the sidewalk in all of the crime scene photos that were produced in court, there were no bullet marks. We, in fact, took those crime scene photos, sent them to a person at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory whose job is to enhance photos from deep space, you know, like Saturn and Uranus, way out on the end of the, uh, the solar, solar system. That person analyzed these photos with a supercomputer and found no bullet marks. So if there's no bullet marks from the scenario of Abu Jamal shooting those bullets, then that just is, you know, one exhibit A 
of the errors in that case. 